Werner von Siemens, the electric dynamo. Lightning, raw, untamed energy. It was an age-old dream to make this form of energy available to mankind. And this is how it looks today. Electricity derived from movement, from muscular effort. The current for the light is provided by a dynamo, a small electricity generator. The invention was made in the age of gas lamps. Hans Christian Oersted observed that electric current attracts a magnetic needle. Five years later, the Englishman Michael Faraday demonstrated the opposite process. The movement of a magnet created current in an electric conductor. An interplay had been discovered between electricity and magnetism. With this knowledge, the way was open for the construction of electric machines. The generator made by Hippolyte Pixie, a rotating horseshoe magnet, produces the current. The battery-driven electric motor constructed by Moritz Hermansen Jacobi. The so-called alliance machine made by Jean-Antoine Nollet. Théophile Gramme's generator, very successful in its day. And Johann Krafogel's electric power wheel. Not the last in the series, but the most important, Werner von Siemens. With his discovery of the dynamo-electric principle, he achieved the breakthrough. Autumn 1866. Werner von Siemens' laboratory in Markgrafenstrasse in Old Berlin. Siemens was already the boss of an internationally successful company that was well established in the telegraph business. But as an engineer, Siemens was fascinated by the concept of producing electricity. Why shouldn't one produce electricity using an electromagnet instead of the rather weak permanent magnets previously employed? On this basis, Siemens constructed his first dynamo. To demonstrate the flow of current, he attached a measuring instrument to the experimental setup. Using a transmission belt, the dynamo electric machine was driven by a steam engine. Siemens started the experiment. As a result of the turning movement of the armature within the magnetic iron core, electric current was produced. A diagram best explains the relationship between magnetism and electricity. The horseshoe magnet for creating a magnetic field. Where the lines of force are closest together, the magnetic field is strongest. A piece of wire is moved through the field. A measuring instrument records the current produced in this way. In order to produce a constant effect, the wire is formed into a loop and rotated. Brushes are used to transfer the current. The changing position of the wire loop produces alternating current. By changing the arrangement of the brushes, one can produce pulsating direct current. To produce a stronger current, several windings are used instead of just one. Or even better, the wire is wrapped round a soft iron core, the armature, which draws the magnetic lines of force into itself and thus increases the power. But it wasn't until Siemens contributed the idea of the dynamo-electric principle that the breakthrough was achieved which allowed large-scale commercial use. He replaced the permanent magnet with an electromagnet. For that purpose, he redirected some of the current produced by the generator itself to drive the electromagnet. The weak magnetic field in the soft iron is enough to get the process started. But it was a long way from the general principle to the actual working generator, subsequently called a dynamo. This is the form Werner von Siemens came up with for the prototype of his dynamo. It contained all the essential parts. The soft iron core with the windings, the armature, and the brushes for carrying away the electric current.
The generator was displayed in this form at the World Exhibition in Paris in 1867. With it began the large-scale use of electricity. In earlier times, energy could only be used where it was produced, with water wheels or windmills. It was the steam engine that first made energy available in the absence of water or wind, but with the generator, energy became really transportable. In the early days, electricity was mostly produced in large hydroelectric power stations. Turbines had the job of transforming the power of water into electric current. To convey it to the user, a large network of power cables had to be set up. That was a gigantic task. High voltages of several hundred thousand volts ensure that transmission lines can transport energy with little loss. Electric power can be produced not only by using water but also by burning coal. Coal-fired power stations soon played an important part in the production of electricity. Transformed into the usual voltages at a local substation, the electric power finally arrived in the household. Electric power brought convenience and made work easier for almost everyone, whether in the country, in factories or in the home. And at the start of this development stood Werner von Siemens, the father of power engineering. He was born in Lente, near Hanover, but soon moved with his family to Lübeck. While he was still at school, he developed an interest in the natural sciences. But his father couldn't afford to send him to university, so Siemens became an officer in the Prussian army and was trained as an engineer. He became a member of the physical society and there met his later friend and partner, Johann Georg Halske. With him, he set up the Siemens and Halske Telegraph Construction Company in Berlin, which has since developed into a worldwide corporation. One of their first great business successes was the needle telegraph used for transmitting news. Words were entered letter by letter, transformed into electric impulses, and then decoded at the receiver's end. Siemens also helped to establish intercontinental communications by developing a submarine cable. He developed a new method of insulating the cable and later used the company's own ship to lay the cable on the seabed. He also founded the Institute of Physics and Metrology in Berlin, the government authority responsible for setting technical standards. Throughout his life, Siemens was a passionately keen inventor, but the dynamo-electric principle remained his greatest discovery, and he quickly recognised its significance. He wrote to his brother William, who managed the British branch of the firm, This apparatus will lay the foundation for a great technical revolution which will raise electricity to a new level among the elemental forces. In 1888, Werner von Siemens was made a member of the nobility by Kaiser Friedrich III. He died four years later.
The glittering light produced by his machines was the sensation of world exhibitions in the following years. People crowded round to admire the artificial lights. In those days, bright lights were still a matter for high society. A steam engine provided the energy which a generator transformed into electricity. But it wasn't long before electric power began to become available in the cities. In Pearl Street, New York, Thomas Alva Edison built the first central power station, which provided 400 light bulbs with direct current. 24 kilometers of cable were laid in an area of less than three square kilometers. But electric current wasn't only used for lighting. In 1881, Siemens presented the first electric tram. For mining purposes, he developed electric pit locomotives. This is the first model, built in 1883. While the electrification of cities went ahead rapidly, power transmission over long distances was a problem because of the high rate of loss. The first long-distance power cable was set up between Miesbach and Munich, a distance of 57 kilometers. In Munich, the current fed the counterpart of the generator, an electric motor. This was used to run the pump for an artificial waterfall. A little while later, during a trade fair, alternating current was successfully transmitted overland for the first time, between Laufen and Frankfurt. Our modern power networks use alternating current. The power station, the heart of an electricity network. Only a few power stations from the early years still survive, like this one at Heimbach in the Eiffel Hills. It was built in 1903. The old turbine room, and modern technology. It's impossible to imagine the world today without electric power. More and more power stations are being built to meet the growing worldwide demand. The basic principle remains unchanged. The technology has simply got better and performance has increased accordingly. The world's biggest hydroelectric power station at Itaipu in Brazil has a power output almost a thousand times as large as the power station in Heimbach. To achieve that, a lake three times the size of Lake Constance was dammed. Who would think that an average household has access to energy equivalent to the muscle power of 60 strong labourers? Using electric power has become a habit with us. But now we have to learn to save energy and not to waste it. And the search is on for alternative ways of producing electricity. Wind power plants are one way of using renewable energy. They too depend on an apparently unspectacular invention, the dynamo. <laughs> 